Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Amanda. I'm a second year vet student and in today's video I am going to be telling you all the courses that I took in my undergrad degree that I used as prereqs on my vet school application. And I'm gonna be telling you the marks I got in all of them. One of the top five questions I get asked all the time is what courses you should be taking in undergrad to get into vet school or what courses you should take for your prereqs on your application. A little disclaimer before we get into this video, I only have experience applying to the Ontario Veterinary College. So the courses that I took in my undergrad are specific to my undergrad program at the University of Guelph and then also for the prereqs that I needed to apply to OVC. But from the research that I've done, it looks like a lot of the prereqs that you need for various different vet schools are pretty similar in terms of certain categories with some slight differences between different schools. But in general, the categories of courses that you need to apply to vet school are going to be pretty similar across the board. So with that being said, the courses that I took in my undergrad were very specific to OBC's admission requirements and the prereqs that you need to apply to their program. But hopefully this video gives you guys a good idea of the type of courses that you could take in your undergrad to use on your vet school application. I'm also going to go ahead and link the OBC admissions webpage down below so that you guys can reference that when you're going through your application and check to see if the courses that you're taking count towards a prereq for vet school. So before we get into the courses, I'm going to go and break down the OVC admission requirements so that the prereqs that I'm taking make sense to you. So the way the OVC admission process works is that there is a mark component on your application and this mark component is broken down into two separate sections. One of them is your marks for your eight prerequisite courses and the other component is your marks from your last two full-time semesters of your undergrad program. So for your eight prerequisite courses that you're submitting on your application, they have to fall into certain categories. So I have all my notes here so that I don't mess this up, but basically for your OVC application, you need two biological science courses, one cell biology course, one genetics course, one statistics course, one biochemistry course, and then two humanities or social science courses. So the eight prerequisite courses that I'm gonna be talking about in this video fall into one of those categories. Another handy tip, if you are a University of Guelph undergrad student, OVC has a really handy workbook that lists all of the courses that the University of Guelph offers and what category they fall into in terms of your prereqs. So I will also link where you can find that on the OVC website down below. So now that we know a little bit about the structure that OVC takes in terms of their prerequisite courses, let's jump into the courses that I took in my undergrad degree. I lied before we do that. If you guys are not already subscribed to this channel and you want to see more videos talking about my journey through vet school or tips or advice on how to get accepted into the vet program, make sure you like this video and subscribe down below to keep up to date with all of the vet content that I will be posting. Okay, now into the video. Okay, the first category of prerequisite courses that we're going to be talking about is the biological science courses. So like I mentioned earlier, I needed to take two biological sciences to apply to OVC and the first one that I took was agricultural animal physiology. <laughs> So this course was an introduction to the physiology of domesticated farm animals and this course emphasized homeostatic control of the major body systems. The lectures covered the nervous, cardiovascular, respiratory, urinary, immune, endocrine, and reproductive systems. This was honestly one of my favorite courses in undergrad and I feel like it really helped me when I was taking physiology in my first year of vet school. This course also had a lab component to it so it was really great to be able to have that hands-on component and look at different organs of the body as they pertain to the different systems that I mentioned before. I don't feel like this course helped me a ton in anatomy because I don't think I really remembered a lot of it by the time I got into vet school, but it definitely helped with my physiology course in first year. So this was the first biological science course that I used on my application, and in this course I got a 93%, so this was one of my higher marks on my application. And then the second biological science course that I used on my application was a nutrition course, called Micronutrients, Phytochemicals, and Health. This course explored the nutritional and biochemical roles of micronutrients and phytochemicals. The study of micronutrients extended beyond the fundamentals of nutrition and included the relevance to human health and disease. The relevant Canadian regulatory components surrounding micronutrients and phytochemicals was also discussed. So in undergrad, I actually really enjoyed nutrition and I took a bunch of courses all relating to animal or human nutrition. But to this day, I still have a strong interest in animal nutrition and this was 
actually the course that kind of sparked my interest in nutrition in undergrad. After this course, I took a bunch of other animal related nutrition courses, but like I said, this one was one of my favorites that I took and it really did cover all of the fundamentals of nutrition. And I think it provided me with a really good foundation of nutrition as I went forward into vet school. I ended up getting a 90% in this course. And like I said, that was another one of my higher marks on my application. So those are the two courses that counted as biological science prereqs on my vet school application. Now let's move into the next category of prereqs and that is cell biology. <laughs> So for this category, I used the course Molecular Biology of the Cell, and let me tell you, this was not my favorite course. <laughs> this was a course that I had to take for my undergrad program to graduate, so I really didn't have a choice in the matter, and I ended up not liking cell biology very much, so I didn't take any more courses for the rest of my undergrad, which meant that this was the only cell bio course that I could use on my vet school application. This course helped us develop an understanding of the key components of the molecular biology of a cell and it also integrated principles of cell structure and function with the underlying molecular mechanisms. Discussions focused on aspects of gene regulation, genomics, cell cycle control, protein synthesis, intracellular protein trafficking, and protein degradation in eukaryotic cells. So like I said, not my favorite course. Still to this day, not something I'm super interested in. So I'm sure as you can imagine, this was not one of my higher marks on my application. I was always told that you should never have a mark that is in the 70s on your application. Well, I got a 79 in this course. At the end of the day, I knew that taking another cell biology course to upgrade this prerequisite mark was not going to pay off in the long run. So what I mean by this is I had a better chance of upgrading my overall application average by just focusing on my last two semesters of undergrad that I was going to use on my vet school application and trying to get really good semester averages in both of those versus taking another cell bio course that I probably wouldn't have enjoyed and trying to get a higher mark in that to bump up that prereq average. I think at the time I did some math and even if I got a mid 80 in the course, it only would have changed my application average by like 0.2%. So in my opinion, it wasn't worth it to upgrade that mark and like I said, I just focused on getting a higher semester average for my last two full-time semesters. Anyway, moral of the story, if you have a 70 on your application, it is not the end of the world. Obviously, you can't apply with all 70s, but if you have other courses that are going to balance out that lower mark, don't stress too much about it and don't feel like you can't apply just because you have one mark that is below what you think you should have. I am the perfect example of that. I applied with a 79 on my vet school application and because some of my other prereq marks were higher, it balanced out that 79 and I still ended up with an okay average. Okay, now moving on from a course that I didn't really like to a course that I actually surprisingly really enjoyed. The course that I took for my genetics prereqs was Genetics of Companion Animals. <laughs> This course explored the theoretical and applied aspects of breeding programs for performance, pleasure, and hobby animal populations to enhance genetic selection and population viability. Like I said, this was probably my top five favorite courses of all time in my undergrad, and a big part of the reason was because my prof was awesome. I am not someone who was strong in other genetics courses in undergrad, but this course actually made me somewhat like genetics, and my prof was a mini donkey breeder, so that was just an extra bonus. Because I liked this course, I actually didn't mind studying for it, and I think that paid off in my mark because I finished with a 92 in this course. Before we move on to the other prereqs that I took in my undergrad, I just wanted to say that I'm not sharing these marks with you to try and show off or try and say like, look at all these high marks that I got because like I told you, I had a 79. But I think it's really useful for people to get an idea of what the average was when I applied. Now, with that being said, I did apply two years ago, and unfortunately, the marks have gone up quite a bit since I applied. So these marks that I used to apply honestly might be lower than what you need to get into vet school at the moment. But hopefully this video and the marks that I got give you kind of a range of the marks that you should be aiming for. Also the marks that I got in these courses didn't make up my entire grades portion of my application. Keep in mind that my two semester averages also played a role in my application average. So take that in mind when you're calculating your average as well. Okay, the next course that I took to fill my statistics prereq was the introductory st statistics, oh my God, I can't talk, was the introductory statistics course that we had to take in my undergrad program. <laughs> 
this was a course that every single person in animal biology had to take. We didn't have a choice to graduate. I had to take this course because if I didn't have to take a statistics course, I wouldn't have. So this course was an introductory course and some of the topics we looked at included, okay, actually I'm reading the description of this course and I don't remember anything from stats and I'll be honest, I don't even know how to pronounce some of these words. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the description of this course up here so that you can read it. So yeah, take that as an indication of how much I enjoyed stats. But honestly, I don't love math. Um, I'm not very good at math. Stats, meh, it was okay. I did have a really good prof for this course, so I think that made a world of a difference, and I actually ended up doing okay in this course. I finished up the course with an 83, so definitely not the worst mark in the world, but it was one of the lower marks on my vet school application. On a side note, I get asked a lot of the time if math is important in vet school or if you need to be good at math. If I'm being honest, the math that we do in vet school is very simple math, and a lot of the times we are given formulas and we just have to figure out how to use the formula and how to input numbers into that formula. So as someone who is not very good at math, um, don't stress too much if you are also not good at it because it's not a huge part of your vet school degree. Okay, the sixth out of eight courses that I used on my vet school application was an introduction to biochemistry and that fulfilled my biochem prereq. <laughs> Again, this was another course that I had to take to graduate from my animal biology program. I took it in second year and everyone in my program took this course as well. This course introduced us to the evolution, chemical structure, and biological roles of the major molecular components of the cell, including proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbs. This course also had a laboratory component, so we did all the things that you would do in a biochem lab, which I don't really remember if I'm being completely honest with you. Looking back now, I honestly don't remember a lot of the things that I learned in courses that I took in my first and second year of my undergrad degree. A lot of the courses that I took in year three and four were courses that I actually chose to take. In first and second year, the courses that we had to take were kind of set for us and we didn't have much choice in our course selection. However, once I got into third and fourth year, our course selection opened up and we could actually take courses that we were more interested in. And those are the courses that I still remember content from to this day, but courses like stats, cell biology, bio and biochem. Honestly, in one year out the other, don't remember a ton of it. Even though biochem was not my favorite course, I also had a really great prof for this course. And like I said, I think that correlated to the mark that I got in it. And I ended up getting an 87 in this course, but I also remember studying my butt off for this course because I knew it was a vet school prereq and I knew I didn't want to take another biochem in the future. So I definitely studied a ton for this course. Okay, the last two courses that I took had absolutely nothing to do with animal biology or vet school, but they were my humanities and social science courses. In my undergrad degree, I had a certain number elective courses that I could take that, like I said, had nothing to do with my program. And this was my chance to take courses that I knew were going to count towards my humanities section of my vet school application. So the first course I took for this was music and pop culture. <laughs> If I'm being completely honest with you guys, my humanities and social science courses, uh, I took them because I knew they were gonna be mark boosters for my vet school application. I basically took courses with good reputations at the university and courses that I knew I could get a higher mark in so that I could bump my vet school average. Music and pop culture was definitely one of those courses. And although we looked at things like different music genres, styles, personalities, and performances of popular music, primarily in the 20th century, I basically don't remember any anything from this course. <laughs> this was also one of the courses that I took in undergrad to lighten a semester. So the amount of effort that I put into this course was very minimal, which then allowed me to put more effort into some of the harder courses that I was taking, like the biochemistries or the stats of my undergrad. So this course was definitely a mark booster for me and I ended with a 93 in it. And then the second humanities and social science course that I took was a human development course. <laughs> Even though this course had nothing to do with animals or nothing to do with vet school in general, I actually really enjoyed it and I feel like I learned a lot about myself and different relationships in my life because this course focused on the development of individuals throughout the life cycle. Emphasis was placed on interrelationships between physiological, sociological, and psychological aspects of normal human development. So like I said, nothing to do with animal biology, but a course that I actually quite enjoyed. This was definitely another Mark Booster course and it definitely 
definitely had that reputation and I ended this course with a 96 which was my highest average on my vet school application so there you have it those were the courses that I took in my undergrad degree that I used for prerequisites on my vet school application my biggest piece of advice is to take courses that you're going to be interested in like I said there was some courses in there that I just had no choice and I had to take but the courses that I did take that I really enjoyed were the nutrition courses or the companion animal genetics courses and I think for courses that are typically known as harder courses or harder topics that are not your mark boosters taking courses that you really enjoy is going to make you want to study them and in the end you're going to get higher marks in the courses that you want to study for so with that being said I hope you guys got something out of this video whether it be a certain course that you want to take in your undergrad or just gave you an idea of the range of marks that you could have on your vet school application also if you guys have any questions about the application process or more questions about some of the courses that I mentioned in this video definitely feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to answer those questions so I am going to go ahead and wrap up the video here I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one bye